Okay. Because it has a little layer of fat. Oh, and yeah, it has okay. uh, meat. Look at that. Wow. I'm on a mission. I want to be able to travel all the U.S. I want to grow and I want to be the biggest Mexican food blogger in the world. That's what I want to do. I can see why they would have this in the morning as well. Nunca esperamos esto. Y dice los papás, ¿por qué no le cambian de nombre? Dice, porque ahora mis niños fácil pueden decir, vamos a los pinches tacos. Can I do it? I think so. I felt like he is a person who's right now making an impact between everybody in the community. Mucha gente que vive de lejos, viene de lejos, solo quieren probar lo que Mexi Papa come. You can do it with the help of everybody out there. You connect with people through food. La mismos clientes le pusieron ese nombre. Go, our first taco. There we go. So you put some of these guys on the map. Un buen taco que hacemos día con día y lo hacemos de, de todo corazón. So sometimes you work, but you don't know who's watching. And because you don't know who's watching, you gotta do everything at a high level. Mexi Papa! Mexi Papa. Mexi Papa is the king of Mexican food. Bro, have you ever had a pajarete before? I've never had a pajarete. A pajarete is a, it's a kind of like a rancher Starbucks, you could say. Yeah. The rancher used to get up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and they had a milk cows, so they needed something to pick themselves up. Yeah. And they came up with a pajarete. They get a cup, they throw cinnamon, coffee, uh -huh. a little chorrito, of alcohol. Yeah, perfect. And then uh, they'll hit it with uh, either cow milk or goat milk. And we can find that here in Compton. Can you believe that? That's amazing. So what a better way to start a day with a pajarete. It's gonna blow you away, brother. I can't wait, man. <laughs> Breakfast of champions, baby. Oh, man. There's no other way to start your morning with a fresh glass of milk straight from a cow. It feels like freaking Mexico. Yeah. You I, got a avocado tree and you got a farm over there full of uh, sheep, cows. I see chickens, dogs. You everything. Got the whole thing. Everything. You got the whole experience here wow. of Mexico. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, let me give you a little tour. The best part here, you get to choose your breakfast. You want goat or you want cow? What are you getting? Cow? I don't know. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna follow your lead. For me, there's not a better milk, chivo. Okay. Chivo is the best. But let me show you how to prepare a pajarete. Let's and do it. And I brought in some special cups for us to uh, to fill out and drink. Sounds good. I gotta introduce you to a really good friend of mine. I cannot have a pajarete without this guy here, El Michoacano. Every time I come here, he's here. <laughs> well, pleasure. Peter Alcantar. Jules, and, good to meet you, man. And you know what? He also has a very special talent that we'll probably be, uh, I'll be showing you after the pajaretes. But Ooh. in order for him to perform well, he needs to have a few pajaretes in, in him. <laughs> you ready, brother? As ready as I'll ever be. All right. Let's do it. I remember as a kid getting, uh, getting my cup and putting some chocolate. I do like chocolate. Pancho Pantera, chocolate. Some cafe. The good okay. stuff. The good stuff right here. <laughs> All right. Chorrito. Eh, right about there. So tell me, how, when did you start drinking pajaretes or what's the story behind it? You know, pajaretes, it kind of takes me a lot to my childhood. Okay. As, as a little boy. Yeah. Um, when my grandpa used to milk the cows. Your grandpa? I'll get some um, uh, chocolate uh, pantera. Remember chocolate pantera? <laughs> That's, that's very OG. And I would put it in a cup and go to my grandpa, hey, mm -hmm. give me some milk. So as he was milking the cow or, 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 or uh, the goat, he'll fill me up. That was one of the most delicious things I ever drank. Wow. So it takes me back. So you can say I've been, I've been drinking pajaretes since I was like four years old. Since you were four. <laughs> wow. Of course, without the alcohol. Yeah. That explains why he's tall. A little bit. <laughs> but uh, I don't think I put enough alcohol in mine. Don't be shy. 
Here, I'll fill you up. The bigger the cup, the more alcohol you put in. Just poquito más. You good? Yeah. Yeah, a little more. Ah. I'm a growing boy. You sure about that? Hey, los hacemos quemaditos. Uno, se quiere. Okay. We'll do something really cool. Yeah. They're called quemaditos. Quemaditos. So we're going to light them up. He got it. He got it. it. Oh. Yeah. Quemaditos. This will make the pajarete, man, take it to another level. We got a chiva waiting here for us. Mr. Tano, we'll go there first. <laughs> yeah. I remember that punch of pantera in there. Going to my grandpa as he was milking a cow, and the man then put in my cup right there and I said, Can I have some, please? And he would just pull me right out, right at the, the cup, and real fast fill it up with foam and the chocolate milk. And I remember just drinking that. That was delicious. And that was the perfect way to start my morning. So there's one way to drink a pajarete and we're gonna show you. Here. Oh. Ready? Instead of picking up. Ah, this is actually really good. What, what are you tasting in this pajarita? The warmth, the milk, it's very pure. And then all the little things that we added just make it make it really delicious. And then the alcohol, nice. <laughs> it's like it's like layers of flavor. Yeah, layers, yeah. yeah. So you get the coffee, you get the cinnamon, yeah. you get the chocolate, and then the fresh goat milk. Oh man. I mean, this is the best <clears throat> breakfast you can I ever can have. see why they would have it in the morning for that pick me up. Literally right? seconds. Yeah. Seconds from the milk comes to it hits your cup, you wanna drink it right yeah. away. Yeah. And it doesn't get any more fresh. I mean look at this. We got the goat here. Milk. And right in here, brother. Uh -huh. Well you know what? Before we leave, I have the most interesting friends, by the way. Okay. Wanna what see? You, now let's, what's going on? Watch this. I have some weird friends, <laughs> but I love them. You know, I have a saying that says, the more dangerous the neighborhood, the better the tacos. Okay. Right now we're in 55th and Main. One of the best tacos in my books. El Taco Grande. Ooh. You wanna try that? Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Why do you keep going back to the same spot? This is a spot for me for Al Pastor. They got the oh. best Al Pastor in LA. And then they got the tacos de birria de chivo. Uh -oh. We just had some goat milk. Yeah. Now has some tacos de, de chivo. See, we got a little theme going on here. This is a spot. I love it. They've been here for over 30 years, run by wow. a beautiful family. Oh. And then when you come here, you see the husband, the wife, and Everyone. all the kids. They got, they got about 20 kids. Yeah. And they all work it. Aviéntame unos tacos al pastor a ponme cuatro con todo, right? Sí. Chile, mucho chile. De todo. <laughs> y luego me das también una torta de milanesa.
Y luego dame cuatro quesatacos de chivo, bien doraditos. I think I have one. Yeah. I would suggest let's try with a queso tacos. Let's do it. The chivo. What I love how they make them, they put a lot of cheese on them and they make them nice and crispy. Okay. Y luego, the chivo, bro. My favorite. Sounds good. So grab yourself one. Cheers, brother. Salud. Cheers, bro. Mmm. That. You feel a little crispiness? Yeah. The taco? That's what I love about this taco. That's it. That's it. Perfect. Go for another one. Mm. I always prefer chivo over beef. Any day. The meat is just more tender and more juicy. Yeah. But we gotta try the consomme. Ready for it done? So good. Real messy. Oh, good. It's the best. And look at you. No shame. <laughs> this gotta be the best. Let me repeat that again. The best tacos al pastor. The best in LA. It's a bold statement. And the preparation is pretty cool. So they have, and then they built it, they stack it up high. And then right in between, they put a bunch of grilled onions. And that's I mean, the, the trompo. The trompo. I mean, it's huge. It's yeah. stuck up high. I believe the marination even comes with a little bit of orange juice yeah. and pineapple. The cool thing is when you when they put all those onions in between, I bet you you're not gonna taste a single cooked onion with al pastor. It all gets disintegrated in there. Tacos al pastor, the best you ever had in LA, I guarantee it. Okay. And I love how they prepare them too. They give you cabbage and it gives it a nice little crunch okay. on the bite. So let's get some tacos. Let's do it. And I recommend a little bit of cabbage. Just gives it that little, mmm. Then, salsita. Lemon. This, brother, is gonna be one of the best bites you ever had. Salute. Oh my God. What did I tell you? Wow. Mm. Wash it down. Where do you rank this taco at? It's gotta be top three at least. All right? At least. I mean, this thing's good till the last bite. <clears throat> mm. So why El Pastor? Why is this your favorite? Uh, give me a little history. Well, Pastor has a little bit of history. Yeah. Here in LA, they name it El Pastor. Yeah. If you go to Tijuana, they name it Adobada. Okay. If you go to El DF, it's Al Pastor. And if you go to Puebla, they call it Tacos Árabes. Árabes. 
Al pastor o shawarma came in to Puebla. So they started calling them tacos árabes because the Arabs were the ones that brought it. They forgot it and they said, you know what? We're going to put a pineapple on top and call it al pastor. And in LA, and in Tijuana, we're like, you know what? Let's lose a pineapple. We'll do a different marination and we'll call it adobada. Okay. LA was like, you know what? We like calling us al pastor. It is different as they go. This one's here, they call it pastor, but they don't have the pineapple on top. But this marination, for me, it's wonders. That's why I do have a lot of love for El Pastor because he traveled all through Mexico yeah. until he got here to LA. They all marinated different, but this one here for me is tops. Mexico Papa is una come mucho, you know. Le gusta nuestra comida constantemente está aquí con nosotros y creo que no nos miente, verdad. Que empezamos con una generación y ahora vamos a la segunda y y a la tercera, so. El hecho de que de las personas que empezaron en los noventas con sus hijos, ahora sus hijos traen su, a sus hijos y sus hijos ya están, oh, ok, y nos siguiendo con lo mismo y pues les gusta. Separates them from other other people do el pastor. They do one little system where they get the taco. The crispiness is kind of is is kind of gonna land on this side on, on the bottom, so the top is still a little bit a little bit raw. You could say. Yeah. But what they do is they, they, they put it around your taco and then they go here and go, bam. This flavor of El Pastor, does it take you back to your youth? Tell us about like when you were growing up. You know, I was introduced to El Pastor Yeah. here, actually in LA. Okay. I mean, back in Jalisco, birria, street tacos, mm -hmm. carne asada, chorizo and all that. But El Pastor, LA was the one introduced me to El Pastor. You know, ever since I was a kid. Why Chivo? Well, Chivo is kind of where I grew up in Jalisco. Okay. Since I was, since I can remember, birria de Chivo, taquitos de Chivo, taquitos de birria. So all I knew was birria de Chivo. Here, when I came here, and people started making birria, la hacían de res. Mm. And the taste is so different. It's very different. Very different. It's, uh, the beef is a little more dry, but the Chivo just hits different. And it's one of those things that, yeah, it takes me back to my rancho. I mean, not my pueblo, my rancho. I mean, I was born in a rancho. Mm -hmm. And then later on, I moved to a pueblo. But every vacation that I had, every chance that I had, I always go back to the rancho. Right. And it was because of the pajaretas in the morning. It was because the food was just out of this world fresh. And whenever they made birria, I mean, they literally killed the goat hours ago. Yeah. And you get the fresh birria, consomme, taquitos. I mean, just perfect. So this takes me back. Yeah. This, this, this is sentimental for me right here. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I love Mexi Papa. The first thing you do with a taco is you showcase it to the camera. There's no way you cannot smile and laugh and just <laughs> Fall in love with Mexi Papa as he's making a video, as he's smashing a tortilla. The other thing I think that we can both uh, agree on is your adventures and your search for things that are new and different and your fearlessness, you know, looking for being a cowhead or some crazy thing. He's very funny. That's one of the reasons why he is such a joy to watch. He has this very bright, comical personality. But I would also say that he's very adventurous. And you let the camera see what's inside. If it's al pastor, if it's carnitas, whatever, but you gotta put that thing right on people's faces. And then here comes the lemon, lomo right on a taco. And then here comes a salsa, slow-mo, right on a taco. And you put it right there and you make the salsa just drip right in front of the tortilla, right on people's faces. And then you get it and put it again on people's faces. And then, tilt, a big nice bite. If he's, he's stuffing a, a massive bite into his mouth. You have to turn your head sideways. My tea papa eats like this. Boom. And then show that taco again right on people's faces. I 
That's how you make people hungry and really, really put the taco on their face and uh, showcase the taco, which is uh, the most important thing to do. And you got people drooling. The whole star of the show is always going to be the food, not me. Pixie Papa, you are the best. Everybody loves you. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> we love you, Mexi Papa. Woo. You know, when you blog, it's, it's all about the food. I never think about myself. Because uh, the whole attention should go to the food because that's, that's, that's your star of the show. At the end of the day, it's all about the taco. It's all about the food. The taco scene in LA is incredible. And the reason is because you have a lot of diversity here in LA. You got people from all over Mexico, South America, North America. They're bringing a lot of the food and they're bringing it to the streets. You can literally find pupusas. You can find picaritas. You can find memelas. You can find tortas ahogadas, tacos from all over. I never even knew there was different kinds of tacos out there and they're bringing them all to LA. So if you come here from anywhere, most likely you're gonna find something that is gonna remind you of home. On the streets, that's what makes LA one of the best street foods in the US. Hey, Mexi Papa. You send me the address, we're in the middle of LA, and I'll tell you the truth, I didn't know where I was turning into. It brought me to this parking lot. Tell me, where are we? What's going on here? Somebody is not from Mexico, I will take them to my personal spots. The spots that I usually go to or you see me at least once a week. I have a saying, yeah. the more dangerous the neighborhood, <laughs> the better the tacos. We're in Alameda and okay. 4th Street in one iconic place called Avenue 26 Tacos. Okay. Pretty unique. Pretty different from the rest. Sounds good. Let's go back, check it out. Okay, we're gonna start with El Pastor. Wow. Have you ever seen something this big? First of all, I can feel the heat from this burner here. I've never seen this in my life, and I could just smell the delicious food. Here, what, what, what's happening? This is El Pastor. Okay. So there's layers and layers of pork, marinated pork. Ooh. And then they, they put uh, onions right in the middle. This thing's about oh, there's 200 onions. pounds that you have here. So as it's cooking on this pit, yeah. we're gonna be cutting it. It kind of goes down here, they finish it over here so it can get nice and crispy. They go through about two of these a day. Wow! This is the Mexican take of shawarma. Ah, okay. So we Mexicans say, nah, we, we don't want no duck in there, we don't want no chicken in there. Yeah. We'll put pork. Okay. And they marinate it differently and bam, al pastor. And they got this, what Mark Waynes would call a jacuzzi. Wow. Look at this piece of meat right here. What, so what kind of meat are we looking at right now? This one they call suadero, okay. or it's also called brisket. Brisket. It's a little part, part of the brisket. Really good. Okay. Because it has a little layer of fat, oh, and yeah, then yeah, has okay. uh, meat. Look at that. Wow. So this process right here, what they do is they crisp all that little part right here. Uh -huh. So when you get your taco, you're yeah. going to have a little bit of both. Check out these little potatoes. The little baby potatoes, they have them there and they serve them with your oh, taco. Oh, wow. Get your taco, you bite it, you okay. get one of those potatoes and, and go at it. The pictures are incredible. Oh. This one here is one of my favorite. Okay. It's called buche. Okay. Now what buche is, buche. it's actually stomach. Nice and crispy, uh -huh. how they make them here. It's just the flavor is incredible. Is this like the traditional way of, or is this a special method? Or uh, I've never seen this before. Why, what's going on here? A lot of places uh -huh. sell buche, they yeah. sell the soya, but they don't, they don't do it like that. Yeah, this is so, awesome. So this little technique with chelo, uh -huh. it, it just gets the meat at the perfect level of crispiness, juiciness, yeah. and the whole thing. Yeah. It's a lot of flavor. Wow. Look at those knife skills. Yeah, skills. exactly. Let, they always say, let the knife do the work. So, and this, is, is this the carne asada? Or is it, what kind of meat? Yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. it's just a, okay. Yeah. I recognize, of course, that one. Check out my boy over here. Getting down, wow. to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the chorizo. Yeah, chorizo, okay. Yeah. This, where they're making the chorizo right now, it, it actually gets smoked. They got ribs, baby. Yeah, this is new. Huh? Yeah, this is Because I usually don't see ribs at, at, at taco stands, yeah. but. This is definitely a special taco stand, so it doesn't <laughs> surprise me if you got something really different here. Yeah. 
three tacos, yeah. you gotta have onion and cilantro. Then, red salsa. Okay, let's put the red salsa on. Yeah. Oh, that's looking beautiful. Bam. My follicles are tingling. This is perfect. Dun, 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 dun. Man, I want to eat these potatoes, but is there a right way to eat them? You, do you eat them with it or do you eat them before or after? I just want to do it the right way. You can do it anyway. <laughs> I, mean, I like this. I even put it in, on, on my taco. Okay. Or you take a bite of the taco and then you take a bite of the potato. I want to take a bite so, of the taco. And the let's, taco. Yeah, let's do that. So let me suggest yeah. for you to try with a buche, Ooh, okay. which is stomach. Okay, stomach. stomach. Goes to the stomach. Yes, right there. Oh, look at that. Ready? Yeah. Hey, I'm ready. My first taco with you. <laughs> right? Cheers. Go. Our first taco. There we go. Mm. For your food experience, now mm. we're out potato. So many good flavors. Man. Well, I want there always to be a jacuzzi cooking method at every taco stand. That is good stuff. Look at the texture of this meat sauce. Yeah. A little bit of chewy, but full of flavor. Is it taco number two? Mexi Papa. More salsa, more hair on his chest. <laughs> the more hair on the chest. Yes. Just perfectly cooked. Gente de la alta sociedad también vienen y comen tacos y todo. A veces este los ve uno dices pensamos que la gente no comía tacos y sí sí o sea sí de verdad se siente uno bien pues el nombre lo agarramos por los mismos clientes llegaban así grupitos y nos decían no oh, ven, venimos ya les pusimos un nombre cuál nombre no pues Avenida 26 porque es, estamos aquí en la 26 otros grupos de gente que llegaban decían oh vamos a los pinches tacos pero después llegaban niños y dicen los papás, ¿por qué no le cambian de nombre? Dice, porque ahora mis niños fácil pueden decir, vamos a los pinches tacos. Pues le pusieron marqueta, ¿no? Le quisieron cambiar, pero nosotros ya teníamos registrado Tacos Avenida 26. Ya las los otras personas que se llevaron el nombre, ya le pusieron Avenida 26, pero como marqueta, ya no como tacos. Pero mucha gente lo siguió, porque como siguió llamando Avenida 26, Avenida 26, pues ya se fue. Pero en sí, nosotros somos uh, Tacos Avenida 26. Y así es. Los originales. Sí, los originales, dicen la gente. I'm, I'm admiring your shirt here. The Mexi Papa Adventures. You know, when I was coming to meet you, I wasn't sure, you know, what to expect. All your videos are very warm. But the moment I came up to you, you're a very warm person. I felt really nice and happy about it just to be around you, you know? So you have really good positive energy. Now you have this successful channel, the Instagram Mexi Pop Adventures, and also your YouTube channel, and it seems to be doing really well. I, I want to know, did this always come easy for you, or did, was it a rocky road on the way to being this kind of successful vlogger here? I mean, tell me about it. Like, did it come easy? No. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Nothing is easy in this world. Yeah. The path was rocky, it okay. was rough. Uh, I do a lot of traveling, uh -huh. so criticism, Yeah. sometimes or most of the time from my own peers, my own family. I heard everything from, won't you get a real job? Yeah, sure. Stop messing around. That's not a job. Be serious. But I always had a, a, a vision yeah. where I was going. So it, it wasn't easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the traveling, long drives, yeah. flat tires in the desert, Yeah. bad hotels, bad food. Mm -hmm mean people yeah but you gotta kind of put all that to the side right and be able for me what i would what i still do i try to get all the negative and turn it into fuel yeah especially criticism yeah yeah so every day i'm always looking for a way to improve yeah. how to get better how to get better yeah but it's not easy because if it was easy everybody will be doing it yeah right, right. <laughs> you built your own uh, your own business here i mean why did you start your own Mexi Papa brand rather than just being a you know a YouTube reviewer for restaurants? I think it's more like a culture thing that I okay. have. I see the hard work that my people put on the streets. Yeah. I see all the good food that they bring. LA is very diverse, so you have people from all over Mexico and all over probably the world yeah. come here. So they're bringing all these really good recipes right. and they're bringing them to the streets. So I saw uh, an opportunity to be able to give everybody a platform and i say you know what let me work really hard so that i can do that yeah so now when i find a place that's working hard and has a really good product i'm able to get them feature them a nice video yeah. present them to everybody 
and get them more business. It's one of the things that I've noticed a lot about all of your videos. You always include the element of making a relationship with the people that are running the place. When I go to a place and I don't like something, or it's not up to my standards, you know, the first thing I, I think about is, how can I help them? One of the videos I saw was one place that was some, let's say, not so good chilequiles. I love that video because one of the things that you said was, I don't need to tell you where this place is, you know? You didn't want to badmouth the place and all that because, you know, t tell me where that comes from. Why didn't you want to expose that place and say, don't go to this place, this has the worst chilequiles. But instead you were like, hey, let's give them a chance. You know, what was that about? Tell me about that. I always think about the owners. Yeah. If I go to a place don't like it, I offer to help. They're willing to fix it. Then I'll come back and if the food is to my standards, then I'll approve it. They have the business to feed their family. Imagine wow. me coming out and say don't come here. Yeah. Then I'll be I'll be ruining their their, you know, their business. So I don't do that. I don't bad mouth businesses for that reason. Wow. I don't want to hurt yeah, them. Yeah. But I will help them. I would not put nothing in my channels that I don't like, that I don't approve. That chilaquil is part you made. <laughs> funny story. Yeah. He got the attention of the mayor to a point where he wanted to meet with me. Okay. And the first thing he said is, I heard you were talking crap. Uh-oh. So, this could hey, go bad. We ended up having tacos, okay. beer, yeah. and it was so good. But one thing that I, I want to do is not hurt anybody in your business. And uh, when I when I get asked, why don't you tell us where it is? Yeah. Like, why would you want to know where not to go? Don't you want to know where to go better? Yeah, yeah. So that's where I come in. Yeah. One of the things I really liked about that video was that you were saying, um, you will get choro. <laughs> I, I, I know a little Spanish, but I didn't know that word. I had to go out, use the dictionary, Spanish dictionary. Tell me a little bit about the word chorro, what does that mean? And what does it mean? You're gonna you're gonna get chorro so that we don't have to. What does that mean? You know, in Spanish, it doesn't sound that bad. In English, it seems like it sounds really gross. Yeah. Uh, diarrhea. <laughs> so in other words, let me get diarrhea yeah, yeah. so you don't have to. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, that's the man right there getting the chorro for us. The reason why I chose to write a song for Mexico Popeye is because I felt like he is a person who's right now making an impact between everybody in the community. He has a platform where he's being viewed with many others around the world and I just felt like he has talent and he provides his words and every commentary that he gives gives an impact on people. They listen to him. He, he, he gives approvals for everything so I just felt like he was a good inspiration for this song and Hope is not the last song because he's a person who's doing good things for the community and Hope the story keeps going. We're live, we're live, we're live. Nacido Rancho Las Cuta del Estado de Jalisco Luego criado por mi abuela Unión de Tula fue el sitio Realmente sus palabras me hicieron bien positivo Estas son mis aventuras, se las cuenta en el corrido if you hear the stories about people that made it big, they're always gonna go back and say, we were small, we were struggling. And that's how everything started. Mexi Papa is a very good person. He has come to us to make a big difference because today we use a lot of social media, something that we didn't do before. We can do other things. Fuera de ser una muy buena persona, nos ha, nos ha ayudado mucho porque ha venido gente de diferentes lugares, nos ha abierto muchas puertas. Nunca esperamos esto. Agradezco a mis padres por traerme a Estados Unidos. Al menos para mí no. Yo sé de dónde vengo y para mí esto fue demasiado. O sea, subimos mucho 
la gente nos ha dicho, o sea, nos dieron y pues, se siente uno bien. The feeling I get when I go and see a little spot that I just love and I say, maybe people can just taste this. Go there, do a video, showcase the food, come back and then see a big line. That's very rewarding. He's really given a voice to a lot of these small businesses where it's truly a hidden gem. And that's really one of the ways that I feel his work has impacted the community is that once he goes there, people are going to go there. Mucha gente que vive de lejos, viene de lejos, solo quieren probar lo que Mexi Papa come. Después de un buen trabajo, un buen plato merecido. Lo que le gusta a Mexi Papa y se van contentos. Que para nosotros es lo más bonito que se puede sentir, ¿no? Que lo que uno le hace con mucho cariño, agrade a la gente. It's very important for me, those little small businesses, because that's where everything starts, and that's where the dreams start for everybody. Gracias. Y a la gente que no nos ha conocido, a la gente que no nos ha visto, a la gente que no ha venido a probar nuestra comida, los invitamos para darle un buen taco. Siempre empiezo en adelante, el futuro son los niños. Un buen taco que, que hacemos día con día, y lo hacemos de, de todo corazón. No sabríamos cómo agradecerles a toda la gente, agradecerle a toda la gente. 20 años trabajando, o poquito más. Conozco niños desde cuando tenían 5 años, ahora son adultos, ya padres. Lo único que puedo decirles es que muchas gracias por el apoyo que nos han dado. Y gracias por probar nuestra comida, nuestros tacos, y los que han venido. Y si alguien nuevo nos está mirando, los invitamos. Siempre habrá Messi Papa, mis amigos para rato. Everything you've done for the Mexican community in Los Angeles and beyond. Small businesses, families trying to make it. You've put some of these guys on the map. These are people that maybe didn't have so many resources and then thanks to your hard work and relentless support for these small businesses and their families, you know, they've flourished and it's thanks to you. Baba, thank you. Tacos, food, is happiness. Who's mad eating a taco? I mean, everybody that eats a taco is always smiling, right? And if you think about food, it's what brings people together. When you say, let's go have some tacos, what's the first thing or reaction people get? A big smile and then go. And then when you're out there with your friends eating, man, you're having a good time. You're having a blast. So tacos is a very important thing to me. Hmm.